and uh, what I would like to address is two simple questions on healing. Okay, the most two simple questions on healing, every question people have about healing can be boiled down to these two questions. Okay, the two questions are God can't and God won't. Okay. So why God won't and why God can't? Okay, if you ask any question, if you ask yourself, even all of us are called to go out and heal others. We are called to heal other sicknesses. Uh, we are called to heal diseases. We are called to heal others. Bible says, you know, if anyone is sick, let them come to the church and let the elders pray for them. And Bible commissions every believer to go and heal others, to cleanse the lepers, to raise the demons. Sorry, to raise the dead, not the demons. Okay, <laughs> to cast out the demons. Right. So. Uh, you know, that phrase, cleanse the lepers, today might not make much sense to you. But, you know, uh, today, if we have to rephrase that and say, we have to say, cleanse the cancers. Okay, cleanse the cancers. Okay, so I like to say it like this. Okay, heal the sick, cleanse the cancer, and raise the dead. Heal the sick, cleanse the cl cancer, and raise the dead. And somebody might say, I might misquoting the Bible. No, no, I'm not misquoting the Bible. In the days of Jesus, they understood the language of leprosy best. So Jesus told in that way. In today's world, world, we understand the language of cancer better. So we have to say, heal the sick, cleanse the cancers, and raise the dead, right? So we are all commissioned to heal others. So there are two questions that boil down to every individual's heart because of which they might not be able to receive healing. And the two questions are, God can't and God won't. Now, let me answer the first question. If you think God can't heal, that means you think that there is no solution in this world to your sickness. Because if there is somebody who can heal, that is God himself. Why? Because sickness, disease, illness, pain, infirmity, infection, every kind of deterioration, including aging, is a first phase and death is the last phase of corruption. Okay, so sickness and illness is the first phase of corruption and death is the last stage of corruption. Now, Bible says we have changed the glory of the incorruptible, immortal God into an image. That means what? Those who believe that disease is greater than God, those who believe that even God can't heal disease or God is not powerful as disease, they believe so is because they don't understand that God is incorruptible and immortal. They don't understand that everything was created by him. They don't understand that in front of God, the powers of evil, the powers of darkness cannot stand. So those who think God can't, they just need a renewal of mind to understand that with this God, nothing is impossible. The one who created the entire cosmos by the very words of his mouth, the one who created the galaxies by the very words of his mouth, for him, nothing is impossible. That's why when we read the Bible, you know, one of the first stories of faith that we read is about Sarah. And when we read about Sarah and Abraham, what we understand is it doesn't matter whether you're weak or it doesn't matter whether your organ is dead, God still does a miracle for you. So whatever you're believing today from God is probably not greater than the miracle that Sarah and Abraham experienced. And that's the reason it was already written before so that you could not get stuck in your journey. Now, in second instance, okay, some people believe God can't. And most people, most people have a doubt here. They don't believe that God, they believe God won't do it for them. When it comes to personally believing, personally, okay, me as an individual, they don't believe that God will do it for me, for me, one person, for me, personally, they don't believe. Yes, they like to uh, shout praise, they like to uh, get affirmation from others, they like to agree with others when they say, you know, uh, we are confessing that God will heal us by his stripes we are healed. But personally, they don't have a belief system that God personally is interested in their well-being. OK, why? Because there might be so many things that have made their conscience weak. OK, uh, and uh, those people here today, those who do not need physical healing, this is also needed for you to understand because you are called to heal others. And those people who are not in need of physical healing, but need soul healing or, you know, heal, need healing from heart issues. This is very important for you because one of the major reasons why you get 
physically ill is because of heart issues now you don't uh, understand it because uh, you know bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and whatever issue first lands in the soul is sure to make a land up as an issue in your body for example god told to adam the day you eat of this fruit you will surely die okay the day you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil but adam did not die in one day okay listen to me but adam died where did he die his soul died in its connection towards god and adam's physical body died after 900 changes that means it died within a thousand years now a thousand years is like one day in god size so still if you see god said the truth he said the day you eat you will die means what that very moment the connection in the soul died but the body died within thousand years that is within one day so you know never neglect a soul issue because a soul uh, when a soul issue uh, becomes a physical issue it is more uh, it is more complicated to receive healing than when your physical body just suffers a damage for example uh, you know you are harboring unforgiveness and then because of this unforgiveness there is some sickness that is manifesting in your body now this is something which will uh, be a little tougher for you to handle then you are riding a cycle and you just fall and you hurt your hand okay that will be easier for you to handle because it's only an external damage physical damage but those issues that actually come as a result of heart issues into the body into the physical body okay those issues are much more stubborn and those issues are much more uh, dangerous uh, a clean conscience okay a strong conscience in the word of righteousness a strong conscience in the word of faith a strong conscience in who god says we are helps us to receive his healing and also helps us to give healing to others okay so now i'm going to answer the question god won't many people have this doubt that personally god is not interested in me being healed and sometimes they pray they pray they pray and they get vexed because they think you know god's not answering my prayer okay i think god is interested in healing the masses or i think god is interested in doing this in church services only or i think god is interested in doing this only through a great man of god and so they disqualify themselves either by a weak conscience which is because of sin or either because of a immature conscience which says that because they don't see it happen that now they have to believe that god is not personally interested in them so i'm just going to share a very simple uh, story from the bible uh, matthew chapter 15 verse 21 reading from nkjv version then jesus went out from there and departed to the region of tyre and sidon and behold a woman of canaan came from that region and cried out to him saying have mercy on me o lord son of david my daughter is severely demon possessed but he answered her not a word and his disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she cries after us or she cries out after us now for those who feel disqualified because of any reason i want you to understand this we are in matthew chapter 15 and by matthew chapter 14 the fame of jesus spread across all of jerusalem the fame of jesus spread across all of israel that he was healing all manner of sickness all manner of disease and he was setting free people from infirmity and even those who were oppressed and possessed now in matthew chapter 15 verse 21 we see that when jesus came to the coast of tyre and sidon a woman cried out saying son of david have mercy on me now i want you to understand this if everyone knew about jesus if everyone knew about the fame of jesus if everyone knew about the virtue of jesus it is not possible that there is only one sick person crying out to jesus because when we read this passage we usually think oh jesus just you know landed from the ship uh, ship into the seashore and there is only one woman at the seashore it is not possible that he is at the seashore came in a ship and there is only one person there on the seashore and only one person is crying out to him so if you read the context carefully what you will understand is among those who were crying this was the one crying out like this meaning to say here the woman is outstanding 
in 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 the sense that a woman of Canaan came from that region, cried out to him, saying, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is grievously grievously uh, my daughter is severely demon possessed." But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, "Send her away, for she cries after us." Now you need to understand that probably many people are thronging Jesus. probably many people are crying out to him probably many people want to touch him but there is this woman who is the most disqualified in the eyes of the society and the reason she is disqualified is they like just today how we believe about ourselves we believe being christians and others being non christians if we see somebody having some other mark on their forehead and come when we pray for them our conscience some out things you know probably she is not going to get her healing because she is not of our faith right in that same way at that time this woman's cry stood out because the disciples were not offended when others cried the disciples were not offended when others shouted the disciples didn't think you know the other people who were trying to touch jesus who were trying to receive from jesus that it was a problem for them to receive but immediately the disciples recognized oh this woman is not an israelite this woman is a canaanite and if this woman is a canaanite she is disqualified from receiving this virtue from jesus and they say to jesus okay listen to me the very people who were the disciples of jesus who were getting trained by jesus who were getting trained by jesus to uh, to show the world that whatever they have received freely they need to give freely the very people who were getting trained by jesus that you know they should not see the people by what their eyes are showing them but they need to see people by the father's eyes these very people the disciples go to jesus and say hey jesus there is this woman who is a canaanite and if you can only send her away it will decrease the pressure of us you know we are doing this bodyguard job for you and it's fine we we will do this job for you you know we are we are uh, acting like a security here it's fine we will do the security but why don't you make your stand clear that the israelites are fine but the canaanites they are not fine why don't you make your stand clear and send her away why because every time she is crying out to you we are feeling uncomfortable we are not feeling good about it we are not happy with it you know uh, her cry might look like a cry of faith but it is actually shaking us on the inside because we know that you are only sent for us we know that we are the qualified ones we know that we israelites deserve you and we know that she doesn't deserve you so the disciples are asking jesus to send her away now you see the woman who has faith she takes this opportunity because her topic has come up she takes this opportunity and you know let me tell you my friend faith takes opportunity when people are trying to pull you down faith takes opportunity when people are speaking negative faith takes opportunity when people are speaking the impossibility faith takes opportunity where people are saying corruption will corrupt you faith takes opportunity when people say nothing good will come out of your life faith takes opportunity when people cannot see your future what you can see with your spiritual eyes so this woman thought oh my god i am so blessed because now the disciples are objecting to my healing oh my god i am so blessed because now it's not my cry that is bringing jesus attention on me but it is the cry of the disciples that is bringing attention of jesus on to me okay so now the woman takes occasion she goes she kneels before jesus and again she starts saying the same thing okay let's read uh, verse 24 okay verse 20 uh, okay verse 24 but he answered and said i was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of israel verse 25 then she came and worshiped him saying lord help me but he answered and said it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs and she said yes lord even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table and then jesus said to her o woman great it's your faith let it be to you as you desire and that ho- and her daughter was healed from that very hour okay let me explain this to you when she started worshiping jesus 
she already heard a disclaimer from jesus she already heard a disclaimer from the disciples at that time jesus says one thing jesus says the disciples see it as gentiles and jews the disciples see it as israelites and canaanites and jesus says i don't see it that way but if you would like to hear my opinion i think it is not good to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs in other words jesus is saying the israelites are the children of god okay and the canaanites they are not so they are like in the caste system of india so you know we are treating them uh, like dogs and we are saying jesus is saying it's not good to give the children's bread to the dogs now listen to the what the woman says she says yes master even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table okay i don't know how many of you are familiar with hyderabad most of you i see blessies on the call from us and almost everyone knows about hyderabad two things that got sold in hyderabad very late in the night okay it's either hyderabadi biryani and these days it is shawarma okay so now if you are at any muslim hotel okay if you are at any hotel that serves this kind of arabic food in hyderabad in the night one thing you will observe okay around 11:30 12 when this restaurants are closing down you will observe that certain restaurants that do not have a proper garbage disposable system okay or they do not have a proper process to dispose the garbage you will see that dogs start accumulating near the restaurant in the night okay usually when i if i eat shawarma in the late night and i'm at a restaurant i usually see it that you know when the restaurant is shutting down the dogs come there because the dogs know that men th- will always throw what they have wasted and dogs want to eat it and the woman says to jesus jesus do you understand that if children are sitting with the father at the table when the children eat bread it is impossible that they can eat bread without making the crumbs fall any of us here can break a bread and be sure 100% that crumbs of the bread won't fall on the table any of us sure no none of us can be sure okay probably we can eat a chicken piece and leave the leg piece there but when you break the bread you are sure that crumbs will fall right so what do you do to the crumbs because the crumbs are so small most of the time you just wipe it away from the table and you think you will sweep it down later so woman says jesus i do not need what you give to your children the woman says jesus i do not need what you give to your children i just need the crumbs that fall from the children's bread and can i tell you my friend jesus told her your faith is great because this woman had belief that the bread that god gives to his children will bring healing will bring restoration will bring restitution will bring reconciliation will bring good and good only in their life many children of god today are in unbelief they cannot believe that whatever god gives is 100% good bible says in him is good and there is no variation at all that means what he is not 99.9% good he is 100% good he does not come down to 99% and go to 100% he does not sometimes become 50% and then go to 100% no he is constant he never changes he is the light he is the love and he is the life and the woman says that bread that you give to your children it is potent with so much power that even the crumbs of that bread are enough to heal me so now jesus says woman your faith is great the reason he is saying woman your faith is great is because the woman understands that the bread jesus is giving to the israelites is enough for them to heal them but the israelites are not convinced that you know they can receive healing from what jesus gives them but the woman is convinced that if she gets crumbs of the bread that he is giving to the children that is enough to heal her so why am i sharing this with you no matter what you think is your disqualification it cannot hinder god god's healing from flowing to you and if you believe that there is a hindrance listen to me if you believe curry plague says it john gee lake says this many people say this if you want healing to flow easily in your body and easily through your body remember this the only hindrance to healing is that you believe that there is a hindrance let me repeat it the only hindrance to healing is that you believe there is a hindrance that means the moment you believe there is a hindrance 
the speed breaker which was not there you have bought and kept that speed breaker in front of you the moment you believe that there is a hindrance the mountain that was not there you have created the mountain by your doubt right the simplest thing is to believe like this canaanite woman she only believed that even if i am disqualified i know god is good even if i am disqualified i know there is no sickness no illness no pain no grief in god even if i am disqualified and even if god is not going to treat me like his child even if he gives to his children what he deserves what his children deserve and even if i get what i need to get as a servant even if i get what is remaining from the table even if i get what the children think is waste even if i get something that is insignificant that insignificant thing that i am going to receive also has healing power that was her belief now the challenge with the children of god is though they receive everything though they don't believe that everything is incorruptible in what they are receiving though they receive everything they don't believe that it is 100% good though they receive everything they don't believe that whatever they are receiving has potency to give them healing and give them deliverance so the reason i'm sharing this story and reason i share this again and again it's so simple my friend if a dog can be healed in the sense if a servant can be healed how much more the father will do to his own children how much more the father will do to his own children just think about the best surgeon in the world right even the best surgeon in the world when he is treating his own child he will immediately forget what is the benefit i am going to get financially by completing this surgery what is the benefit i am going what is the applause i am going to get from people by doing this surgery why because his focus has completely shifted from that kind of a mindset to a father and a son relationship and jesus says woman your faith is great because at least you understood that a good father from heaven will never give bad things to his children at least you understood that a father in heaven who is full of healing can never give sickness to his children at least you understood that a god who is incorruptible will never give a corruptible thing to his children at least you understood that a god who is immortal will not give something to his children that will allow mortality to reign in their life at least you understood that a god who is full of virtue will not allow his children to be possessed to be oppressed to be sick to be ill or to be in that situation where they are and see them suffering and as a child of god i want to tell you my friend when you truly believe that you are a child of god you become radically violent why because you are not willing to tolerate those things that you do not deserve as a child of god and can i tell you if there is no corruption in your father there needs to be no corruption in your life if your father cannot be touched with sickness if your father cannot be touched with illness if your father cannot be touched with infirmity if your father cannot be touched with pain you should also not be touched but you need to resist these thoughts you need to resist these things when they come in your body because you believe in who you are and because you believe in who you are so those two mountains in our life okay not only for us personally but even when we heal others see the reason jesus didn't say go out and heal heal the sick when jesus said heal the sick it is not because once you heal the sick you will feel good that you are a good preacher of the gospel it is not that because once you heal the sick you will know that you are god's power in you it is because of already who you are you are to heal the sick because you you are a child of the incorruptible god whenever you see any kind of corruption in this world your blood should boil and tell you this is not meant to be in my atmosphere this is not meant to be in my life this is not meant to be in the body of somebody who is my friend this is not meant to be in the body of somebody who is in my who's my relative this is not meant to be in the body of somebody who is my family member and when you remind of your self of who you are and who you are you will also understand what things in life you have to radically and violently resist let's just pray today my friend okay and i just want you to meditate on these two things that god can and god will remove the two doubts okay remove the two doubts 
God can't and God won't, and just meditate on these two things. God can and God will. God can and God will. God can do it for anyone and God will do it for you. God can do it for anyone and God will do it for you. God can do it for anyone and God will do it for you. And tomorrow, I just want you to call people who are sick, okay? They might, I, I, you know, we have all these doubts. Oh, Prem, they don't believe the word. Oh, Prem, they are this. Oh, Prem, they are that. Oh, Prem, they are that. All I want to tell you is if the Canaanite woman before the resurrection of Christ can be healed, or her daughter can be set free, she can be delivered. That means after the resurrection of Christ, the blood has been shed for the redemption of the entire creation. The divinity has given, you know, has redeemed the entire humanity. That means God is not offended at healing everyone. It is only you who have any hindrance in your thinking by saying, you know, that person might not receive because of this reason, this person might not receive because of this reason, you know. So Bible says he gives to everyone freely and he wants to heal you today and he wants to heal many others through you. Even I want to encourage those people, uh, you know, who are not sick, I want to encourage you, even though you're not sick, resist those thoughts of sickness, resist those thoughts of illness, resist those thoughts that tell you that you are a mere human being, resist those thoughts that tell you that you are aging and go out because you know, if you really believe that healing is a part of your divine nature, then you will go out and also heal others. Father, we pray for everyone over this call today. I pray for everyone under the influence of my voice. I pray, Father, that because they are redeemed by an incorruptible blood, because your image is incorruptible, because in your glory there is healing, there is no sickness, there is no pain. And Father, because Jesus is the sole expression, he's the expressed image of you, Father. And when we see Jesus, we see a God who doesn't impute sickness on us. We see a God who doesn't impute pain on us. We see a God who does not impute infirmity on us, but we see a God who rather than punishing for our sin, absorb the sin, absorb the punishment, absorb the death and release his healing virtue onto us. Right now, I pray for every person under the influence of my voice or this Zoom call, every hand that is stretched towards the screen, Right now, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I declare that you have been redeemed by the incorruptible blood. I declare that you are a child of God. I declare that you are a child of destiny. I declare that the light that is in you is greater than any darkness around you. I declare that your spirit has so much light that every kind of darkness, every evil, every weakness, every infirmity, every pain, every infection in your body has to leave in the name of Jesus by the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit. I speak virtue, I speak healing, I speak the healing glory to flow from your spirit into your soul and your body. Right now, I also see there are people, especially women who have soul issues, who have heart issues, and these soul issues and these heart issues, they have caused you to become a victim to physical pain, to physical problems. And I just want to tell you, sister, I just want to tell you, auntie, your mother, I just want to tell you, release, let go of that unforgiveness, let go of that jealousy, let go of that competing spirit, let go of that victimization spirit. I speak every chain be broken right now in the name of Jesus. I speak every chain be broken in the name of Jesus. I speak every false mindset. I speak every lie of the enemy. I speak every veil that is stopping you from seeing the light be ripped apart right now in the name of Jesus. I speak the glory of God. I speak the light of God. I speak to bodies right now. I speak be healed in Jesus name. Right now I see back pains are being healed. I see lower back pains are being healed. I see people being set free by from back pain. You can just stand up and you can check yourself. You can bend and check yourself. Right now, I release the healing virtue of God in Jesus' name. I release the healing power of God in Jesus' name. Somebody is feeling heat over the left hand right now. Just place it over your head or just place it over any part of your body where you're expecting healing. I speak the warmth of God. I speak the glory of God. I speak the goodness of God. I speak resurrection to organs. I speak resurrection to organs, especially those people who are suffering with blood sugar, 
blood pressure problems i speak normal c to you in the name of jesus i speak hb a1c levels become normal in jesus name i speak thyroid levels become normal in the name of jesus i speak to every blood infection i speak by the incorruptible blood of jesus be normal by the light of christ be normal by the light of christ free from infection free from deficiencies i speak normal c to you in the name of jesus i speak optimum health over everyone over this call in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray amen 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 i just felt this word as i was praying that you know uh, there are people who are not able to break through because you're not uh, persuaded see one of the reasons why you're not violent with sickness is you're not persuaded that healing is 100% god's will for your life because the moment you are persuaded that god wants you to be healed and whole you will not you will not uh, what do you call you will not tolerate sickness as you were tolerating it before so i just want to pray for such people who are, somebody testified right now they felt heat on their neck and their back and i also feel as i was praying that many people felt heat over their right hand over the left hand somebody especially on the left hand and you know that is god sign of telling you that you know your hands are blessed and you need to carry this virtue and heal others bible says lay hands on the sick and they will recover it did not say if you think they will recover lay your hands okay don't go by science or don't go by common sense right bible says lay your hands and then they will recover right when we take a tablet we blindly believe if we take the tablet it will is going to be fine when it comes to the word you just need to do what the word says so once again i want to pray for people especially those kind of people who have not been violent against sickness and against illness and the reason you have not been violent is because you didn't understand that sickness and illness are exactly in the opposite spirit or exactly in the opposite frequency to the frequency of god god is incorruptible but sickness and illness is the first stage of corruption sickness and illness is the first stage of corruption in your body right now so i just want to pray once again for such people because you need to break free in your mind before you can allow the healing to break through in you and through you to many others father in jesus name i thank you for grace your word says you give grace to the humble father and as we submit our thoughts as we submit our thoughts to you father i pray let your grace abound i speak to everyone of this call i speak especially those to those mindsets that are crippled because of sickness i speak to mindsets that are crippled because of sickness i speak to mindsets that have come into bondage that have come into prison because of corruptible sickness because of corruptible illness i speak those prisons be broken in the name of jesus i speak let your faith arise i speak may you break through i speak may you break forth with healing in the name of jesus let light life and love be your portion let the perfect goodness of god manifest in each and every realm of your life may the perfect goodness of god manifest in each and every area of your body may the perfect goodness of god manifest in each and every part of your body in jesus name i pray amen 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 thank you so much everyone see you tomorrow if you have a testimony you can drop it on whatsapp bless you everyone bless you